Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters. My name is Adam Torres, and if you'd like to apply to be a guest on the show, just head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, today I have Tony Drockton on the line, and he's founder and chief cheerleader at Hammett. Tony, welcome to the show. Adam, let's do this. All right, Tony. So uh, I'm excited to get into this topic today. So I want to go into Hammett. I want to go into founding it. I want to go into um, how you've become, you know, one of the fastest uh, growing luxury leather handbag brands in the U.S. So that's a that's a big deal in over 800 stores nationwide. So I need this story here. Um, but just to get us kicked off, we will start this episode the way that we start them all with our Mission Matters Minute. So, Tony, we at Mission Matters amplify stories for entrepreneurs, executives, and experts. That's our mission. Tony, what mission matters to you? Adam, I love to leave people just a little bit happier, smarter, engaged after every encounter. That's my personal mission is just to leave people in a better place. And when I launched Hammett, I felt the same way about the opportunity in the luxury American space, which is just leaving our fans a little bit happier, a little bit more content, more engaged with the brand after they've encountered us. And it's how I built my life, and it's how we built Hammett, which is just one new relationship at a time. It's awesome. Love bringing mission-based entrepreneurs and executives on the line to share, you know, how they're making a difference in the marketplace and uh, and really their calling and, and why they get up and do what they do every day. Because we all know not easy to be an entrepreneur, but um, but uh, we we go out there and we do what we do. So great to have you on. And I guess let's just start in the beginning. So so how did how did Hammett come come about? Like tell us a little bit more about founding the company and where the idea came from. Well, first of all, it's very easy to be an entrepreneur and lose all your money. Uh, <laughs> Fact. A lot, a lot of people listening right now, they just not cringe like, yeah. And some, some people but are like, I'm quit. glad I'm over it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Go ahead. Don't quit. That's normal. You know, and Ham, it's, it's, it's really the, the third company I've started. I, you know, took the not so straight approach to luxury handbags. MBA in finance back in Ohio, came out here, went for the money, sold advertising, launched a construction business, jumped into the internet, then went into real estate residential finance in the 2000s before I landed into this luxury space. And how did I get here? Well, like every entrepreneur, I was searching for my passion. And I went past the money on the others, did pretty well, but was never able to hold on to it. Adam. It just mm-hmm. seemed to keep flipping through my fingers, no matter how much I made. So I decided after uh, the real estate boom and mortgage run, which was really good for me, that I would take some time off and really go deep. Mm-hmm. And through some soul searching, believe it or not, from Tony Robbins, like the Burning Man, got a coach. I found that um, I really wanted to be able to travel the world with what I do. I wanted to engage my passions around art, architecture, and design. I wanted to go deep into what I love doing every day and turn it into a business. And the luxury space called me because there's an opportunity in America to bring luxury back. It's a lost category here. That's why everyone carries all those European brands that most people know and love because they're searching for that luxury that can become a family heirloom. So met Stephanie Hammett from an introduction. She had these bags locally here in Manhattan Beach, California that women were falling in love with, but it was a small little business. I invested and we took off and started running. Unfortunately, we took off, started running summer of 2008. And if you know the timing, the great recession hit right afterwards. So, by 2010, I was running in mud, not moving at all. And we'll get, maybe get deeper into that story later. But I pushed through it, and here we are, you know, today, the fastest-growing luxury handbag brand in America. 
Man, what a great story. And I, I say this over and over again. I'm like, you know, 2008 was not, not a good time for everyone, but a lot of businesses were launched during that time, just like any, any other, you know, recession or even the Great Depression, right? Like uh, all these things, like there were other businesses that were launched and things that took place that are, you know, lasted a long, long time and did very well and created a lot of value and opportunity in the marketplace. So, I mean, in this recording, I guess it'd be appropriate to ask, considering we're just coming, you know, on the tail end of the pandemic, all that other good, all that other, um, all that other stuff that we've been through over the last couple of years. And there's some people that are, you know, pivoting, some people displaced, some people figuring out like what's next. I mean, you went from, you know, some, you know, some other successful ventures um, into something that maybe you didn't have all the background in, but you, you did it. Like you did it. You still went for it, mm-hmm. and now you're, and now you're, you know, you're obviously doing very well in it what would you tell some of the people that are out there right now kind of um kind of trying to find their way like what kind of things would you tell them well first of all find your way it sounds so simple right don't find someone else's way don't try to be anyone else there's only one you and you are amazing you are good enough you are capable and if you really embody that if you first go deep inside and say, I'm enough to be successful. That's the start of entrepreneurship. Then you have to also realize you're not enough. But once you have the confidence, you're going to draw mentors all around you, and you're going to bring in great employees, and you'll start to embrace a team. And we can go really fast alone, but we'll go really far together. It's one of the things I like to say. So all great entrepreneurs usually hit that feeling of complexity, And that's because they're trying to do it all themselves. If you're lucky enough to hit the ceiling of complexity, then you're ready to embrace the team philosophy. So at Hammett, I spent 10 years really just pushing the business forward, almost rolling the rock uphill. Got a little over 10 million in revenue, and then I I hired a CEO, Andrew Forbes. He was the founding CEO of Jimmy Choo. Spent eight years there with Tamara Mellon. Then he launched their Kardashian clothing brands, and then he joined Hammett. And I got to tell you, bringing him on, and he brought a couple longtime team members, we just skyrocketed, and we're up 5x since he joined us. That's the power of building a team and bringing in people that are, I, I believe he's smarter than me. He definitely has much more experience in the industry, and we were yin and yang with each other. He's this cool, collected, Scottish amazing man that has experience and can calm down a room. And I'm that hyper go, go, go quick start entrepreneur that wants to just run as fast as I can. That's awesome. Um, Tell us a little bit more for those that uh, obviously is a big brand, Hammett. Tell us a little bit more about the brand and just the vision for the brand overall. Well, first of all, you know, we're still a small brand. It doesn't matter the number. Remember, you're you're still winning relationships one at a time. And I think that's the key to Hammett. If, if, If you're building relationships one at a time, you will never fail because those relations will carry you, carry you far. So that's what Hammett is. We started in small home parties right here in the South Bay of California, little wine and cheese parties. Um, Women would come in, they would fall in love with the designs and they would take them home and then they introduced them to their friends. And that's Mm -hmm. gone all the way to today. Now we have parties that are 1,500 people. We still have wine, but we also have live entertainment. These are ragers, and we sell our designs, and people love it. We do that twice a year. And then in our own retail stores, we do the same thing. We host a lot of events. We're very experiential because that's how people connect with each other. You know, if you're the one thing you can't do on your website is get this group philosophy of everybody talking about the brand, right? So when you bring people into one room and they share your passion, their passion for for your product, magic happens. And we know that. And all great, you know, entrepreneurs know that, right? That's why you bring your your fans together. That's why even as a company, you take your employees to an off-site outing. When you get people focused together in a group on what they're passionate about, magic can happen. 
Yeah, absolutely. And and what I think is so interesting about this, and one of the things we talk about for all our longtime listeners is we're we're always talking about community and and building a community around whatever your mission is, and whether that's a physical product like a like a purse or a designer bag at Hammett, or whether you're you know have a media company, whatever it is. Um, it, it's really about building a community and kind of just thinking one step beyond. The the, um, the product and the delivery and the experience, which, of course, all of those have to be in place. So always, you know, constant and never-ending improvement on that. But then it's also thinking about how you can, um, like, how you can exceed expectations. And so one of the things that I noticed about Hammett is, you know, in perusing the website, the lifetime promise. So guarantee yeah. every piece of signature hardware and every smooth gliding and zipper for uh, gliding zipper forever. I mean that that's a big deal. I mean, tell us a little bit more about that because to me that's that's over delivering on the promise. Yeah, well, I'll tell you how how it got started, and I'll tell you why we do it. It got started mm-hmm. when I launched the brand. We were in maybe a year and a half, and I designed a new zipper pull. We put it on the bags. We shipped them all across the country. We were carried in some department stores at the time, and we start getting these calls. Snap, one broke. Snap, another one broke. And I was like, snap. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, our reputation is going to be ruined. The zipper pulls are literally breaking because I didn't test them. New design, get run pressure test. You know, you learn. I had to think quick, and I said, you know what? The brands that I always looked up to, they had lifetime warranties, no question asked. And so I said, you know what? We're going to take care of this. And we got really creative because they were around the country. We didn't want to have to pay shipping back, shipping over, fixing them here. Mm -hmm. We found local shoe repair places. We called them, shipped the zipper pull there, told the customer just to stop in, and in five minutes they had a new one on their bag, and they were on their way. And what I found was those customers are still some of our biggest customers now because they were blown away on how quickly we took care of it and how it was seamless for them and took very little of their time. And that's when I said, you know what? We have a lifetime warranty. We're going to stick with this. We're going to fix anything for anyone forever. No receipt, no registration. If it's a hammock, we will take care of it. And that's turned into, I mean, where we are today, which is even though we've shipped, Adam, I I think we're pretty close to 900,000 bags since we started. Oh, my God. Congratulations. That's a big deal, first off. I don't have one of those little clapping things, but if I did, I'd I'd do it right now. (laughs) Post-production, you hear that? We want some clappers at it. Go ahead. (laughs) Adam, it's been – we have one person that does repairs right in Hermosa Beach. That's it. Wow. She might have 30 right now, 25 that she's reconditioning. Because we don't just repair them. We bring them back to life. We send them back out there so they can become a family heirloom. And that's really the secret. So, I mean, I know earlier you talk about building a community, and you said, you know, it's a given that the product needs to be there and the experience and the follow-through. Well, I don't think it's a given. You know, I think what happens is it's a lot of work. So it's much easier to create a story on a website Mm -hmm. than it is to execute around that story during the most difficult of times. Mm -hmm. So to give you an example, in the last couple of years, the you know pandemic, people made excuses. Well, I just got to do what I have to do to get to the other side. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people did things that they never would have done. And they didn't make it to the other side. In the end, you you have to execute even in the worst times to the best of your ability. So what did that look like for Hammett? We sat down in March of 2020. We said, listen, how are we going to get to the other side? Number one, we have to keep all of our people. If we lose our people, we've lost it. So we focused, how can we now keep our people? And that turned into pay cuts for all the executives, kept everybody working, working both remote, live Zooms, video streaming, going deeper uh, online. We called our major partners and said, please take all your product, even though you're closed, because we need the money. Mm -hmm. And guess what? Most of them did. We called our our specialties. We sent 100 uh, packages to our specialties every three weeks for for three times. So they got three packages, just little love notes, little support, Mm -hmm. and we just said, we're going to be here for you when you open back up. And guess Mm -hmm. what? They loved it. 
And so we, we just laid the groundwork in relationships and in, in our actions to become successful. And in March of 2020, we didn't know where it's going to be. But guess what? By July, it wasn't so bad. Yeah. PPP, the stimulus, things opened back up. Well, we were one of the only luxury handbag brands to have product on the shelves of all the stores when they opened back up. Because a lot of companies, they closed down. They sent everybody yeah. home. They laid everybody off. They stopped making product because they, were, they, they went into freeze, uncertainty. Mm-hmm. The secret to being a successful entrepreneur is to make a choice, to keep mm-hmm. making choices as fast as you can and be okay with mistakes. I always say, don't keep making choices that will put you out of business. Make choices that will make you more successful, or if they don't work out, they'll just set you back a little bit. That's the secret to those choices. You don't bet the farm every day. Because, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. by the way, yeah. if it would have lasted a year, we all would have been out of business. <laughs> yeah. That's, you, know, you know, I tell people that all the time. I'm like, if it lasts long enough, I mean, hey, we're all going to have some bigger problems, which, you know, it, it is what it is, as they say. But um, we, we, yeah. we progress, right? Other things happen. New opportunities happen. There's, you know, there's always something that comes up out of, out of those ashes. So um, what a great story, though. What a great Thanks, story and just a Can great I add one more? story. In it. Oh, please, please, yes. So, again, as an entrepreneur, my job is to lead with passion and positivity, to be the believer, right? And so when the whole team saw that I believed we were going to not just push through, but we were going to accelerate through this, and I believed in them, they got behind it. And so I'm that guy that when I go into a parking lot, I always believe there's a parking spot right in front by their entrance door of the store. So I drive right up there. Sometimes there's not, but most of the time there is. Versus some people that just park way in the back because they don't believe there's a spot up front or because it's easier, right? I don't want to deal with it. So your job as an entrepreneur is to go to the front and look for that spot and then to park there and walk out and go, yes, I knew it was here. And that's what it's like, you know, navigating uh, a startup or during the most difficult times, you have to believe that spot is there for you. Yeah. Tell tell me a little bit more about about the the design and just the approach that Hammett takes to um, really creating modern handbags. Like, tell me a little bit more about what goes into that. You know, we, from doing all these trunk shows, which started at home parties, I get a lot a lot of feedback from the fans that wear that. Mm. And it, we started out with a simple handbag. And it's a bottomless pit. It had just, you put your stuff and everything fall. But from feedback, I found they didn't just want it to be beautiful on the outside. Our fans wanted it to be functional on the inside, just like that perfect backpack that's got a pocket for everything. So we started to design the functionality into the inside and the outside, like a cell phone pocket to easily grab your phone from the outside. That's a simple functional pocket that everybody uses. We grab our cell phones, they say something like 17 times you know, in a day or whatever. So when you put functionality with the softest leather, the lifetime promise hardware, zippers, everything there, when you put those two together, and then we embraced an architectural unique look. So when you see a Hammett bag, you know it's a Hammett because our silhouettes are unique. And then we wrap them not only in the softest leather, but with our signature rivet detail. It's a linear line of rivets that's on every Hammett bag so that you can see a Hammett from across the street without the need for a logo. It's our Burberry check. It's our Doc Martin stitch. It's our Ugg boot. It's a look that is undeniably Hammett. And when people touch the leather and then they wear it because of all the functionality, they're hooked because mm-hmm. other luxury brands, they don't have that combination of functionality amazing soft leather, and undeniably a look without a logo. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and hence why the uh, why the club's called the Rivet Club, right? Yep, you got it. There we go. Um, so another thing that Hammett's doing, I, I would argue to um, kind of over-deliver on the promise, is um, tell me a little bit more about this, you know, try before you buy and how that came about, because that, that's Ooh. interesting. I know I know a lot of brands try it, but um, no pun, actually pun intended, fine. Um, a lot of brands yep. try it, but don't pull it off. So the try before well, you buy. Big shout out to Ben, the founder of Try Now, T-R-Y-N-O-W. 
They can do it for any category, any brand. If you have a product that you know once somebody encounters it, meaning they buy it online and it ends up at their home, that they're going to fall in love, just add it. It's a small mm-hmm. company that's exploding. So I found Ben last year. We launched Try Now, one of his first clients, and we're all in. So it's basically the equivalent that you get when you go shopping at a store. You get to touch it. You get to feel it. You get to spend time with it. And if you want to keep it, you walk up and you pay and you walk out. We're now able to do that online. People can, I mean, five, six, seven, I've seen nine handbags go out at once. They get them home. They open them up. They experience it, our brand. They keep the ones they love, and they return the rest. We love it. Mm. It's, a, it's, a, it's, it's, I think, the next big thing in fintech after, like, the afterpays and the four payments. Man, it's awesome. Well, Tony, I, I can talk to you about this all day long, but we're about out of time for this episode. Um, oh, I mean, really, it's, no. been, it's been a – yeah, no, it's been great having you on and hearing the Hammett story and what – you know, just how, how the company's grown. I mean, just a lot of great things here. If if somebody wants to learn more about the product and to engage with the community overall, I mean, uh, what's the best way for them to do that? You know, Hammett, H-A-M-M-I-T-T dot com site. He catches all the socials under the same Hammett or Hammett LA. And then also we just, we dropped a 10 episode TV series. It's goingpublic.com, G-O-I-N-G-P-U-B-L-I-C.com. And it's 10 episodes all around Hammett and three other like-minded brands that are doing a crowdfunding round. And it's a great way to really get to know me, our CEO, and the entire team. Fantastic. Um, and we'll put all that information in the show notes as well so that the audience can just uh, just click on it and head right on over and uh, check out Hammett and then uh, goingpublic.com as well to see the journey. Um, and, I've, and I've checked out that site. I mean, it looks awesome. I see the brand. Thanks, up there and all Thanks. That good stuff. Yeah, It's great. Um, so I definitely recommend people go check that out. And uh, speaking of the audience, if this is your first time with Mission Matters, we're a platform that's all about bringing on uh, entrepreneurs, executives, um, brand owners, and really just showcasing what they do, why they do what they do, and really how they're in the marketplace making a difference. If that's something that interests you or excites you, we definitely welcome you to hit that subscribe button because we have many more mission-based individuals coming up on the line, and we don't want you to miss a thing and uh tony uh, really appreciate you coming on the show it really has been a pleasure this was great thank you very much adam